Hey, the all-new KSAM Wake Up Morning Show tomorrow morning with me and Tracy. Wake up, start your day on a high note, along with today's best country and all your favorites. Getting uh, close to Halloween time, and we have got all your Halloween and fall festival things uh, uh, for Walker and Montgomery County uh, listed up on our community events page, uh, like trick-or-treating, costume contests, yeah. hay rides. Pumpkin patches. Haunted trails, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. games, and much more. So get over to KSAM1017.com, and you'll find our Halloween page there with all the fun events for the whole family that's uh, coming up here at the end of the month. That's at KSAM1017.com. Our community spotlight is brought to you by Wiesner of Huntsville. 101.7 KSAM, today's best country and all your favorites. Yes. Good morning, Carlos. How are you doing? Ooh, doing well. It's Wednesday. It's all downhill from here, and I haven't had a lot to complain about the weather, so I am doing well. Really? Well, then uh, maybe we'll make you stand outside this afternoon for about <laughs> five minutes. It's going to be a really hot one again today. Man. Hey, all right, so before we uh, get moving on here, funnies on Facebook. If Facebook has taught us anything, it's that a lot of people are not ready for the spelling bee. Indeed. Yep. Indeed. Some tough ones out there. Absolutely. What do you got? I saw this one. Uh, this is how I see almost every DIY project. Why buy it for $7 when you can make it yourself with $92 of craft supplies? <laughs> That's right. My wife and I got in a conversation about this this past weekend because Sunday was National Ice Cream Day. Yeah. So we said, ooh. We found our ice cream maker in storage, so we pulled it out, we cleaned it up, we went to the store, we bought all the ingredients, and we made some awesome banana ice cream. It was fantastic. But then we started talking about it. It's like, you know what? We could have gone and just bought a bucket of Bluebell or something for like seven bucks. <laughs> Not gonna I lie said, to you, that's what me and Glenn said. <laughs> I was like, but it cost me. It cost me twelve dollars <laughs> in milk and eggs and sugar and ice and, and and rock salt, which we had to go to two different stores until we finally found some rock salt. <laughs> so, oh, my oh goodness. But boy, that was some good man. ice cream. Man, that was. Good. I guess it was worth it. All right, give us another one. Uh, I accidentally wore a red shirt to Target today, and long story short, I'm uh, covering for Debbie this weekend. <laughs> All right. And this is funny. Right, so this is this meme that I found here is actually a picture of uh, elementary age school kids mm -hmm. who wrote uh, down things that scare them the most, Ooh. and their teacher posted these. So Paul, little Paul, said, yeah, you know, what scares you most? Paul said, werewolves. Uh, Nina said, sharks. Okay. Reasonable. Dylan said, the unstoppable marching of time that is slowly guiding us all toward an inevitable death. <laughs> Catherine said, Dylan scares me. <laughs> Kids just say the darndest things. Oh, they do. Hey, what do we got coming up next hour? Oh, we got to get some, some great stuff on the way. Justin Moore, Gary Allen, a throwback from Willie, and so much more to start the midday today on this Wednesday. Okay, thank you, Carlos. Yes, sir. Dan and Shay on 101.7 KSAM, your hometown radio station. I'm Carlos Zimmerman. Glad to have you with me on this fine Wednesday morning, wherever you may be. Got your Southeast Texas weather forecast coming up. Still coming up this hour as well. Jason Aldean, Morgan Wallen, and a flashback from Alabama as well. Like I said a few moments ago, a new survey has come out and said 94% of employees say they will delay contacting IT until it is necessary. The main reasons people delay reaching out to IT include the following. They're doing their own troubleshooting first. They're too embarrassed to admit what happened. They want to make sure the issue just wasn't a one-off glitch. They don't think IT will be helpful, or they don't know how to reach IT. That same survey, IT workers say the most common accidents and mishaps employees had with their work computers included spilling coffee or water on it, spilling alcohol on their computer, hmm, dropping it, or even falling for a phishing attempt. Hmm, interesting. You know who's our IT here? It's ourselves, because we work in radio. That's right. Kojo on 101.7 KSAM, your hometown radio station. Good morning. Carlos here on the Midday Show. Got your Southeast Texas weather forecast coming up in just a few moments. Still this hour, Dirks Bentley, Brothers Osborne, and a flashback from Kenny Rogers as well. Well, the New York Post has a story about a woman who asks her dates for references from other women before getting too involved. 
She liked the idea because she had a bad experience with a guy who never introduced her to any of his family or friends, and after a few months she realized that he had already had a relationship, and she was the other woman. You'd think she'd get a lot of pushback from guys about this references thing, but the first time actually went well for her. She met a guy online, but before they met, she asked for a female reference. He was a little unsure, but after she explained why she was asking, he gave her his sister's phone number, and the woman texted her a bit. She went out with the guy, and they are still together four months later. Will this be a growing trend? Who knows? We shall see. Brad Paisley and he didn't have to be. Part of 90s at noon on 101.7 K Sam. Good afternoon, I'm Carlos Zimmerman. Got your Southeast Texas weather forecast coming up. Also on the way, Sawyer Brown and Lori Morgan as well. Time for a food story. Uber Eats, that's right, Uber Eats has just released a new report, which includes a list of the most popular special requests when ordering food for delivery. No onions was the most common request. The rest of the list went like this. Dressing on the side came in second, followed by they want ranch, extra soy sauce. They want whatever they want their order, whatever they're ordering is to be spicy. They want sauce on the side, no lettuce, no jalapenos, extra gravy, no slaw. Some other random details from the report. The most ordered items are French fries, garlic naan bread, pad thai, miso soup, and a California roll as well. Yeah, so the whole no onions thing, oh man, I'm a big onion guy. I know it makes your breath smell bad, but man, some grilled onions or even just onions on a burger, oh man, that'll, 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 that'll set in nicely. It's perfect for me. Might not be for you, but it's perfect for your, your boy here. Good afternoon, I'm Big Line Edwards, that's Kenny Chesney, and Don't Blink, one of my favorite songs from him. Here we go now, Chris Stapleton, it's White Horse. On KSAM. Ashley McBride, that's light on in the kitchen on KSAM. Good afternoon, I'm Big Len. Your forecast is coming up. Well, Instacart has just released a tool where you can look up your zip code and see your neighborhood's scare score based on local orders for candy, costumes, and decor. Now, they did a lot to get this information, but they also came up with the 10 most popular candies overall. Uh, no shockers on this list, but here we go. Going to start with number one. Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, number one right there, followed by Peanut M&M's, number two. Number three, M&M's. Number four, Tootsie Pops. Number five, Twizzlers. Number six, Hershey's Milk Chocolate. Number seven, Sour Patch Kids. Number eight, Candy Corn. Number nine, Kit Kat. And number 10, Starburst. Now, are any of your favorites on that list? Zach Brown Band here on your hometown radio station, 101.7 KSAM. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Welcome back to another edition of the Saturday Afternoon Drive. Jordan Smith here, taking you through the final few hours before we head to dinner time. Here on this Saturday, October the 21st, Hardy with Give Heaven Some Hell here on 101.7 King Sam, playing today's best country and all of your favorites. All right. It's the creepy time of year. We all know this. It's Halloween. It's getting cooler. It's getting darker, quicker even. It's getting a little darker as well. Halloween decorations up all over the place. So, it's a good time to ask if your house is haunted or not. If it's a theme. But, apparently in a survey, 42% of people say they have felt a paranormal presence in their home. Or at least something or someone they couldn't see. I'm in that 42%. I absolutely have lived through this, and I'm sure you have too. 37% have heard unexplained sounds like footsteps or voices, and 18% claim they've actually seen apparitions or ghostly figures. Despite all of those things I just told you, though, only 16% of people actually think their home is haunted. Although that might not be a humongous deal, 24% of people say... They would buy a house that's haunted if the price is right. I mean, yeah, if the house is cheap enough, I don't care, whatever. Just don't creep me out while I'm sleeping. Hang out with me at dinner? Nah, I can care, care less otherwise. <laughs> Ugh. Here's some Dylan Scott for you <laughs> on KSAM. Jordan Davis on 101.7 KSAM with Lou Bryan with Buy Dirt. So like I mentioned a few minutes ago, the town's lost its water, but it's the, the, the other details of this story that make this interesting. 
this town is in the news because it suffered a water main break yesterday morning. It, it left the town without any water, as well as other towns around this town that rely on their water. About 25,000 people are affected. Crews worked nonstop to repair the water main, and it was actually successful. But late last night, just a couple days ago, the mayor said that it could be a week until they're able to restore drinkable water for the citizens. First, the system needs to be repressurized. There's a chance that could cause additional breaks, and even then, residents will be asked to boil their water for two to three days while the water is tested. The reason why this is important to the story, one, because it's huge with water main breaking, but two, the town that lost its water is a town called Watertown, New York. I'm not kidding. The town is called Watertown, and it's in New York. The New York part isn't the important part. Watertown lost its water. So is it just town now? I don't... I, 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 I don't understand. Let's hope that everything fix, fixes itself, though, because they need water. Obviously.